you know, friends, apologies for missing Friday. I was doing a workshop which just kept expanding. And it actually did take up all the time that we had we had for it and more. Anyway, that workshop was on or a result of my three episodes on time management. An organization wanted me to speak more about it with their employees. And one of the things that came out of that episode, of that workshop, was that I was asked a very pointed question by one of the participants, and which was seconded by the manager on how is productivity linked to time management and what is the difference between them. Naturally, we started with certain basics of productivity, which is what we are going to look at today. But then the questions kept getting more and more detailed and specific. And with their kind permission, and I thank them for having given me this permission. I am going to talk for the next three episodes on productivity and what are the things, mistakes that one can make and what are the things that one can do. A lot of it has been covered in the time management episodes. But even then, it was very interesting to look at that same question of time management from the productivity angle. So starting today for the next three episodes, so total four episodes, I am going to speak and delve into the details about productivity. And uh, let's see, let's see whether it's interesting enough for you guys also or not. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. Okay. So it all started with the basic question, what is productivity? And the simple definition of productivity is that it is the value that you create by doing something divided by the number of hours you have spent on it. So the higher that number, that means you have created more value and therefore your productivity has been higher. Now, often we measure this only from certain viewpoints. We don't look at all the viewpoints. Okay, And we have to understand that productivity can be different. It is measured differently. It has different implications and importance for various tasks that are performed. Okay, There will be certain, say, floor jobs. That productivity is simply a measure of the throughput. How much can you give me? How many fans can you make? How many cars can you make? and that kind of thing. But when it comes to software development, when it comes to things that are not so easily measurable, measuring and judging the right productivity standards becomes quite challenging. And productivity is very important because at the end of the day, it is your productivity of an organization or maybe even in individual cases of how much you can pay your employees, right up to the ultimate stage of whether your business is capable of sustaining itself and whether it should exist or not. I have seen failures. Well, I have seen people facing challenges because of low productivity, which we corrected and they are thriving organizations today but they need to be able to make sure that the productivity remains as required. And having said that, I think it automatically follows that if there is stagnating or reducing productivity, it can lead to tremendous challenges, very severe challenges either as an individual, for an individual, or for an organization. And therefore, 
in today's age where everything is getting more refined, more specific, there are different ways of looking at productivity. Traditionally, the term productivity came from the industrial revolution, where the throughput of a machine or whether the productivity of a production line was judged to make sure that they were running efficiently. But in today's world where things are not so simple and where a lot of the tasks are done by automation, it is the creativity and the productivity of an individual, which is not measurable like the throughput of a machine, that becomes an important factor. So by and large, the most common factor or the most common way we talk of productivity is to talk of labor productivity because that's the origin of the word. And labor productivity is important even today. There is no two things about it. But in today's times, as I just said, we have become more defined, more refined, and more detailed. Okay, so we need to measure and certain other essential productivity measures. And one of the most important measures after labor is the capital productivity. Whether your capital is invested in capex or whether it is in working capital, we have to constantly ensure that we are getting the best possible return on the investment that we have made. And in today's times when competition is so crazy, another very important productivity that you have to measure is your innovation product. Are you constantly innovating? It doesn't have to be just a brand new product which nobody has seen. But are you constantly innovating to give your consumers a better product, a better experience, and better service? So it is very important that an organization measure at least these three productivities which is the labor productivity, the capital productivity, and the innovation productivity. Coming to labor productivity, it is the primary productive measure that is employed by all organizations. And I would believe justifiably so, because it is this productivity, the higher it is, you can pay your employees higher wages because they're more productive, they're producing more within the same resources. And this leads to a better standard of living for those people. And a better standard of living, living automatically implies an increased consumer purchasing power. Your employees can purchase more and therefore the economy thrives better. And also, that labor productivity measurement is what is going to, at the end of the day, determine whether your organization is profitable operationally or not. So this is the important thing you need to look at. The next comes capital productivity, which we just spoke of. The first one is that there is capex investment. We need to constantly check and be aware that we have the right and proper utilization and returns on the investments that we have made, whether it is in property, whether it is in machine, or whether it is in other infrastructure. And then the second part of the capital is the working capital investment. Are you making optimal use of the resources, the funds that you have allocated as working capital. And that is why we frequently find people talking about the turnover of the capital, so to say. How many times do you churn your money? And this is very important because with every churn, there is a profit, there's a percentage of the turnover, whatever you're looking at. And the more you turn it around, the better is your outcome. 
So this is one way of judging whether your working capital is being used optimally or not. And both these things together have to give you the best ROI that is possible on all the funds that you have invested. And then we talked of innovation productivity. And as I said, you need to, in today's world, constantly innovate, constantly better your product, your services, and the consumer experience. That has become a very big thing. People like to get a good experience, whether they are buying something worth 50 rupees or 5,000 rupees. It helps you to stay ahead of the competition because you get a differentiating factor if you are creating something new and innovating. And you get better at fulfilling the demands and needs of the consumer. And a consumer buys your product first because he needs it. And then at times, just because he feels like it. So innovation productivity is very important. Now, as I said at the beginning, in the earlier episodes of time management, we had looked at many aspects on how you can become better at managing your time and hence be able to perform the best that you are capable of. And at that time, I think in the last episode, we had also looked at various tools that can be used to become a better manager. Essentially, those are the same tools that you would use to increase your productivity. Tools like making a to-do list with prioritization, using the Eisenhower matrix, using the Pomodoro technique, using the eat the frog first technique and most of all time boxing and allotment of time slots for deep focus work. So while we generally tend to speak of productivity and judge it for an individual, today times have changed. It's not one person who's running one machine. Today, you're working as teams. Even when you are doing something that is individual, you are dependent on somebody. You are going to need somebody on whom you will have to depend, trust, and hope he delivers in time so that your productivity stays best, optimal. Okay, so very little work is done alone and therefore there needs to be a way of measuring your productivity more accurately. Now when you're working with a team, that team has to be one which behaves like a well-oiled, well-synchronized, meshed gearbox. No two gears can clang against each other. They have to gradually and smoothly go from one cog to the other. And if this happens, then that machine works well. In the same way with a team, if everybody delivers the right product at the right time, in the right manner, the team's productivity increases and so does the productivity of each individual. Because if I am doing a task where somebody else from my team is going to give me two of the components, if they come and mesh into my time frame, my cycle in the right way and smoothly, my productivity is going to increase. And so does the productivity of the whole team. So this is how a team needs to work to be highly productive. This is one statement I made there, which I think is very, very right and which everybody appreciated, is that to deliver maximum productivity, each individual should do whatever task is given to him or her. They need to do it right. They need to do it well. They need to do it on time. They can't afford to procrastinate. 
and they need to do it without fail. As Nike would say, just do it. In the next few episodes, we are going to look at certain things about productivity, things on how your productivity can get hurt and reduced, things you can do to maximize your productivity, things you can do or tips to help you better your productivity. While, as I said, we have covered a lot of these things in the time management episodes that we did, it will be interesting and I promise you it will be, judging from the way the workshop went. Our Q&A session lasted for nearly an hour, over an hour, whereas the entire workshop was just for about two and a half hours. You can imagine. So we're going to cover a lot of these things over the next three episodes. I hope you enjoy them. I want to see how you feel about productivity when it, we are discussing and focusing so many different things that count to your being successful. So let's start this marathon. It's not a big marathon, it's just three more episodes. And this week, because the organization for whom I did this entire workshop wants these episodes in this week itself, so that they have next week to discuss it among themselves. This week, I'm going to be doing four episodes. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Friday as usual, and then last episode on productivity on Saturday. I hope you enjoy them all, and I hope it helps and benefits you all. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.